All right, in this video, I'll give you five reasons. If you are an Indian, an Indian passport holder or someone who uh, follows the Indian culture, the Indian tradition or the Indian lifestyle, you should not get married to a Thai lady. Okay, now this is not bad mouthing Thai women, neither it is bad mouthing Indians. Okay, I want you to listen to this video in its entirety and then give me your points of view, whether you agree and disagree. Um, the only limitation in this video is I'll be sharing my opinion, my limited perspective. So it is not like everybody would agree with this, but I can definitely tell you that what I'm going to share with you is by, like they say, majority, it is very much a reality. So I'll give you five reasons if you're an Indian why you should not marry a Thai woman. And you can tell me whether you agree or disagree. Okay. Now, uh, the first one, first one, uh, let me get one bit of foundation uh, so that you understand. By Indian, I'm, I'm talking about the majority for whom they follow the Indian tradition, Indian culture, Indian mannerisms, Indian lifestyle, and the typical Indian behavior. Okay. Um, just a normal average. I'm not saying low class, high class, just a typical Indian. Okay. Uh, and when I'm talking about the Thai women, I'm not talking of the high upper class or highly educated or uh, the very lower class or only bar girls. I'm talking of the general population. Okay. The general average population. So both the cases I'm taking average. So now what are the, uh, having got that, Let's focus on the five reasons. Mm. First one, if you're going to marry, if an Indian is going to marry a Thai woman, do not be fooled by their simplicity. Do not be fooled by their petiteness. Do not be fooled by their um, extraordinary uh, kindness, mannerisms, like, uh, you know, whenever you see a Thai female or you see a Thai video, they'll always do swadi kaap and they smile and they're very gentle and ka they'll be very, very um, sweet and, you know, the words are stretched and it sounds very nice, okay? This is not fake. It is not made up. This is how they genuinely are. But the problem with our Indians is when they see this, they're like, wow, Indian females don't do that. Foreigners don't do that. Here, the Asian culture is at its best. They're so humble. They're so sweet. They're so nice. This is where you make the first mistake. It does not, uh, you assume that this is by default and it comes for free. There is nothing for free. In fact, any Indian who asks me, I would like to marry a Thai, I ask them, how much money do you have? Okay, straight away, I ask them, how much money do you have? And they all, they get kind of confused and what has money got to do with anything? Like, yeah, money is important, but why you ask me how much money do I have? Because if you marry a Thai woman, you as a foreigner, you're known as a farang or farang, you are considered to be a ATM machine. Okay, an ATM machine, yeah, you know, when you go to an ATM machine, you put a card and you press a series of buttons, tee, 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 and then the money comes out and then you take out the card. Okay, you will always be considered like an ATM machine. Don't mind, my dog is barking. There is the delivery guy who has come. Okay, so you will be considered an ATM machine. Okay, now is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? That I'll leave it up to you to decide. But understand this much. Okay. Any relationship that you are in, you have to provide for them. But what makes the Thai culture or the Thai women distinct is they are born and raised as a family unit. They are born and raised where they have to take care. The girls have to take care. Uh, forget the boys. Boys by default. Girls also have to take care of the mother and father. And when they get married, you know, it's like the mother and father losing an arm and leg. Okay, because there was someone who could help them with their farming, someone who could help them with their day-to-day, -day, um, you know, chores of the house, someone who would work and bring money to the house and they would eat because they always eat together. They eat together, they they celebrate moments together, they sleep together. Like it's, it's a very uh, mixed family, a large mixed uh, family unit. Okay, it's not like a nuclear family, it's a joint family. So... 
when the girl is married off or she goes with someone else uh, this is another important point you have to pay the dowry okay in the indian culture the girl pays the guy dowry you know the parents say as okay take care of my daughter this is emergency fund for her please you know we want to maintain our respect we are not asking you to spend lavishly and take care of her this is from our side to maintain our respect and dignity so the girl's family gives the boy money but in the thai culture the guys the boy gives the girl's family money to say that since i'm taking your daughter since i'm taking someone from the family since you will not have maybe anyone to take care of you here is from my side respect okay i'm giving you a sum of money so first is that dowry part which uh, is by default which i thought you would know but then it doesn't stop there so let's say for example you give uh, $10000 $5000 or $10000 you give but then after that it does not stop then you have to take care of the woman you have to provide for her you have to feed her and you will be like well, isn't that you know isn't that by default yes i'm not talking of only the expected stuff like food clothing shelter no you are supposed to provide extra extra because she their mentality is i'm dedicating my life to you i am now totally yours you have to take care of me and my family you understand it's not just me so for example uh, and she will not say this explicitly she will tell you my mother's sick my father's sick or oh, my mother's not well my father's not well uh, or if she has money in the bank she will take and give it to her mother her father her brother her sister if they are in times of need because they are a closed unit in fact uh, don't be surprised if sometimes the brother elder brother or elder sister give her money it's like your wife but they are still giving money and it is not like why are you paying my wife no it's a family unit okay and uh, i'll tell you this much that uh, if you want to if you have to maintain your self respect as a farang because they consider uh, a farang is supposed to be superior a farang is supposed to be an upgrade over a thai person a thai man um, so you are supposed to give extra others why should they get married to you they could have got married to a thai person okay and keep in mind given the fact that indians this is by default i've spoken in other videos indians have a very very pathetically bad reputation very bad from the stinky smelly uh, ill mannered uh, you, you know uh, hairy all over and uh, they don't care about personal grooming and hygiene and uh, you know bargaining with the poorest of the poor for pennies so there have been lot of tourists who have spoiled india's name okay and indians name but i'm not getting into that i made a separate video about that um you have also the fact that uh, it is an unspoken reality that a thai woman okay and my wife has openly told me this okay that uh, you, if you marry a thai there is respect you marry a foreigner he should be rich that means you're marrying a farang he should have lots of money so that's why you're marrying a farang and it's not a looked upon as gold digger no you're marrying this farang to take care of your family so if, you know if they marry a 60 year old 70 year old and she's in her 20s the parents the mentality is see she loves us that is why she is going to take care of that man that is why she's sacrificing herself for that man and yes given today's modern generation a uh, 20 year old knows here i got a multi millionaire he can make my dreams come true which i can never uh stuff that i could never afford he is going to give me so why not you know end of the day the sausage is the same okay i just have to keep a wrinkly old sausage happy okay so they it's two adults who are agreeing with each other the old man knows he is never going to get anyone as attractive as her and she knows for a fact this is my ticket to happiness so when they marrying a foreigner it should always be a westerner american australian canadian you know german french okay but now if you're going to marry a foreigner and that to an indian or a pakistani they should be ample reasons why oh maybe he is very rich 
Maybe he is incredibly amazing. In fact, when my wife informed everyone that she's marrying a foreigner, everyone was, wow. But when she told them that he's Indian, they looked upon her like, seriously, not a joke. They were like, what has gone wrong with you? But then, you know, over the period of time, when they realized I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't uh, sleep around, I take care of them, I provide for them, then their viewpoint about me as an Indian changed. Okay. So the first first point, which I want you to understand is, you are an ATM machine. From the time you get married, you have to pay dowry, then you have to take care of the family, then you have to provide for her after you get married and whenever she wants money, okay, you have to give her uh, because you are supposed to provide for her. And here the sad fact is there are some who knows this and take advantage of it. That's why they'll ask you the latest, you know, shoes, all that. Now, they may not ask you the latest branded items, but they'll definitely ask you. And, you know, when you are talking of a routine day-to-day -day life, these small, 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 small expenses really, they clock up. Okay, it's not going to be cheap. Um, so that is why when my wife goes, you know, she's a housewife. When she goes for a holiday or when she goes to visit her mother, I have to, you know, pay for, obviously, the stay. Even though she's staying in her own mother's house, the duration of the stay, like you'd stay in a hotel, the food money they would provide her. And before going, she'll give a token money to show, Mommy, I love you on her birthday, on a special day, uh, you know. Everything, all her expenses, I have to take care. Okay, so it all depends what kind of wife you're getting. So the first one is you're an ATM machine. So get ready for that. So how much money do you have? Don't think it's going to come for free and cheap. Number two is, this one is one of the biggest expense. If you thought that dowry was the biggest killer, no, you're mistaken. The biggest expense that you will face once you marry a Thai woman is she will constantly pressurize you, constantly nag at you, constantly ask you, which my wife does, which all the Thai women do, is for you to build a house. Okay, now, for those of you who, you know, consider a house an investment, you'll be like, hey, that's nothing wrong. We should have a house. You should have your own house. You should have your own land. Yeah, but guess what? In Thailand, being a foreigner, you cannot own property. You cannot own the house. And if she's your wife, the house by default belongs to her. You can have millions and billions of properties and houses and uh, bank accounts and everything else. All of it belongs to her by default. If you have signed the dotted line, if she's officially your wife, it belongs to her by default and the court of law will support her. So if you do build a house, well, guess what? It belongs to her. And you might say, oh, boy, whether her or me, it's not a big deal. Well, after the house is built, she doesn't have any incentive or reason to keep you around. I'm giving you harsh facts of life. She doesn't need you. She doesn't need to be loyal to you, faithful to you or keep you around or uh, have any reason to keep the marriage intact. In fact, she can just tell you bugger off now or you can even die. She wouldn't mind. In fact, when I had my near death experience a few uh, you know, days ago, which I uh, documented in my video, my wife uh, told me we should get a lawyer and uh, prepare your last will. Now, you might think, oh, what a gold digger. No, it's a, it's a fact because if I wouldn't make the last will, my money would be stuck in the bank and the bank would say, no, only Mr. Loy Macedo can claim this. Uh, if he's not around, he'll have to forfeit it. Only he can take it. And uh, all my property and everything else, maybe... Maybe, I'm just saying officials or the government people will say, no, this is Loy Mercedes property, only Loy Mercedes can claim it, you can't claim anything. So I have to make sure that I give it to my wife and kid, otherwise it goes to, we don't know who, okay? So this is like the law of the land. Remember, it's a law of the land, this is how it is. USA maybe has different rules, India has different rules, Thailand different rules, Vietnam different rules, Africa different rules, okay? So <clears throat> when I was nearly about to die, it's not that my wife was saying, Okay, sign the dotted line, uh, give me a will and die. No, my wife was genuinely concerned about me, but it all came down to, I have to give the money to her. Okay, in the same way, if you build a house, okay, once you build a house, by default, it belongs to her. So whether you live or die, it goes to her. Whether you 
uh, say no it doesn't belong to it belongs to me no it goes to her uh, if you have a fight and you have a divorce it goes to her uh, anything by default it goes to her so the pressure will always be on you and let me tell you this not a single month goes by where my wife keeps harping and asking and uh, somehow requesting we want to build a house take a land build a structure let's do this minimum that minimum because that is the first and most important goal after they get married is to build a house okay and why do they build a house so that the entire family she and everyone else can live there her mother her father her sister her brother or if they are not there <coughs> you and her and <coughs> after you're no longer there they will bring all the other family members to stay okay and that takes out a big chunk of your money land and a uh, house <coughs> okay which cost millions and remember by default it belongs to her number 3 if you are an indian why you should not get married is um indians have this um this uh, behavior or this habit where an indian will take care of his mother and father an indian will be loyal to his mother and father an indian will be loyal to his religion his tradition his culture well guess what thai people also uh, the female she is loyal to her mother and father she is loyal to her family she is loyal to her culture her tradition so you have two people who are loyal to their teams so when you get married okay there will always be the clash who is more important my father my mother or your father your mother well guess what if the girl is staying with you in india then no problem maybe everything belongs to you but if you are planning to stay in thailand oh well uh, understand this much that even if you sacrificed everything you left your mother father your land your culture your tradition you are part of the family but in terms of the hierarchy you are not the number one you are very down even if you purchased a million dollar house million dollar property you gave a millions a first loyalty first priority is god and king i'm telling you this this is a fact i can challenge you for every thai person it's god and king buddha and the king then comes their parents okay then because the mother and father give them birth they are very committed to the mother and father then comes their family brother sister uncle aunt nephew nieces all of them that's number 3 number 4 will be uh, you know their culture their tradition their food their lifestyle or you you can put that as number 5 number 3 uh, can be the child yes the child because her loyalty her her entire being is dedicated to looking after children thai women they really really want children and they really take care yes there are some exceptions to the rule but by default uh, thai women really take care of their children they give them the best then after that comes her family then comes her tradition finally finally you might say ah oh, then finally i come no you're wrong then comes her she has to take care of herself she has to look after her needs she has to keep herself happy she will do everything to preserve herself and then at number 5 or number 6 is where you come in that is where she will give you importance so after all this she will choose you so imagine that is a hierarchy that means if she had to choose the life of her child versus your life you know like they say you know sometimes if there's a gun pointed to your head the head of the baby or head she will choose the baby it's by default now i know this might sound very extreme but i'm giving you facts because you are always an outsider man you are not there for the first 20 30 years of her life now all of a sudden you are coming she can't betray all of them and come to you they are very loyal to their family their tradition especially their king especially their religion their god okay um so understand that is the hierarchy <coughs> number 4 is um this one is maybe something silly or maybe you will not think about it much but uh, if you are in thailand your culture your food your lifestyle it gets badly affected because you will not have your friends around 
uh, to get the authentic taste of your food unless you know how to cook it's not never going to be available um you'll have to manage with their culture their tradition their religious festivities so even if you have two or three indians around you'll not feel close to them so you will be totally detached and you'll be homesick okay you'll truly be homesick for me thankfully i don't have that attachment but i do miss the food i do miss the food because it's not at all available here if there are restaurants they are not authentic indians unless i go to the mainland okay so unless you are in the mainland you're going to have a tough time in with regards to food and understand this much that their culture their upbringing their lifestyle it's it's very different okay it's not the typical indian like uh, how you have in india your friends the people you hang out with your colony your uh, religious festivals you will not find any of that in here in thailand okay unless she comes and marries you and stays with you and last but not the least the final one is uh, see in my case i am habituated to being alone i enjoy being alone you know i have always been alone so solitude is my friend but if you are a person who loves his mother and father loves his friends loves his environment loves his surroundings and you have you know family you'll feel very 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 alone you'll feel suffocated um they like for example my wife and my daughter they will talk in their own uh, language which is thai uh, they will have their own you know jokes and their own moments together and it's always like i'm the villain you know i'm the you know good cop bad cop i'm the bad cop she's a good cop and the daughter goes to which i encourage because i don't want her to keep coming to me so understand this one she will forever be alone you'll forever be alone and you'll really feel it huh? you'll really feel it because even if they bring all their thai family everyone has a get together uh even when they take photographs this is a fact huh? which has already happened the like for example the entire family was there i took photographs and then they asked me to stand with them and they took my photograph well all the family members they had posted on facebook the entire family being together that means Loy Mesido was the one who took the photograph of the entire family together and I was not in any of their published albums why because I was the one taking the photograph who wants to have me and one family member missing which I did you know it kind of did hit me but then I realized hey why am I acting you know like immature and this is the reality of life okay I'm just an outsider I have a function and I have to do that function and uh, when time is up bye bye so i i would rather have them being genuine rather than faking it and having me with them so it's not like my wife doesn't have my photograph with me and the baby but the majority of them are them with their family or my wife with her baby uh, sorry with our baby what am i saying so you'll always feel left alone <sighs> yeah so bottom line what i'm trying to tell you is if see if you're an indian you have your mannerisms you have your expectations you have your culture you have your norms you have your behaviors um it, yes you can reinforce them yes you can stamp it and say i am the head of the family but then you lose the peace of mind you lose uh, the happiness that, and you can literally sense it and i'm me at least i'm not one of those type of guys who uh likes a person to fake it like a fake orgasm i don't want them to fake it and show they are happy with me no so like i told you if you have enough and more money if you have uh, the ability to detach yourself from being close to people if you don't mind that you give them everything yet you're number 5 in the hierarchy and last but not the least that it's always them versus you alone you are the outsider the black sheep well if you can't take any of this then you should not get married to a thai woman because end of the day remember it's not that they are bad this is how their culture is okay so i hope this answers your question as to why why i feel that an indian man should not marry a thai woman remember they are not bad it's just that this is how their culture is just like this is how an indian culture is okay let me know what are your thoughts in the comments below good bad ugly love to hear from you this me signing off